morning on this beautiful Sunday. This is the meditation for our second Sunday in Lent. On Sunday morning, for a brief space of time, we leave behind the world of home and work and school, the world where we have our list of things to do, activities to participate in, tasks to complete. We come here this morning seeking something else. We come here seeking a shift from the ordinary to the sacred. From doing to being, I invite you to close your eyes. Let's go over your list. Recall that it is the season of Lent. Remember the parable of the sower. The sower throws the seeds, and where it lands determines if it will grow or not grow. Think of it this way. Think of the season of Lent as a sower, the time when the seeds of faith are thrown with special intensity, as a time when God calls us in a low, urgent voice. Listen. Jesus is being drawn to Jeru Jerusalem, where God is calling, where is God calling you to? What is God calling you to do? As we extinguish, extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness and pain of injury done to the earth and its ecosystems. Let us pray. Um, Loving God, as we journey through this holy season of Lent, may we be open to your presence. Give us the strength to make the changes that are needed in our lives and the courage to take on the work of transforming the world. Amen. For announcement today, uh, there's a lot of coughing and going on this morning, so instead of shaking hands today, let's fist pump fist bump or wave How, or, elbow. or elbow or something. Our pastor's not feeling well today at all and uh, several others aren't feeling well so let's avoid the germs. Our altar flowers today are given in love to honor the birthdays of Gail Pinson, Chris Anderson, and Archer Spears. Hello, Archer. Can we sing happy birthday to you today? Wait, and Libby. And Libby had a birthday this past week and Mark has a birthday. Coming up. When's your birthday? I'm not old enough yet. You're not old enough yet. Okay. But we're going to sing to you anyway. So instead of saying the individual names, we'll say to everybody. That has birthday. Everybody. Are we ready, Johnny? have a wonderful birthday or had a wonderful birthday. This week on March the 4th at 5 30 is choir practice at 6 30 will be fellowship and Bible study. The have a heart for senior offering total $275. Yay us. Some March activities. Next Sunday at 5 p.m. is the now committee meeting. At 5 30 is the board meeting. March 20th at 7 p.m. is a spring concert with Christian Rock Band Forgiven at the First Christian Church in Pikeville. The 22nd at 3 p.m. is Cedar Creek Assisted Living Worship Service. And the 29th is the Fifth Sunday Methodist Home Offering. For our Easter egg hunt, we have eggs, and our eggs are already stuffed, but we're going to make treat bags, so we need some candy. So if you bring some candy, no hard candy and no candy containing peanut butter, we'll get some treat bags ready for all our little egg hunters. Backpack Ministry needs some plastic grocery bags, and please put the bags on a table in the fellowship hall. Any other announcements? If nothing else, we'll ask our pastor to come lead us in prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Anybody have any unspoken requests? God sees your hand. Let's go to the Lord. Father, as we come before you today, I want to thank you, God, that we can come together and want to pray for these special prayer requests that have been lifted up today. We give them to you, Lord. We ask you to help uh, those that are sick and those that are in the hospital, recovering, having treatment, facing surgeries. 
Lord, we know that there's a lot of needs represented here today by the many prayer requests, both spoken and unspoken. And God, we know that in this life that we shall have troubles and tribulations and trials. But we also know, Lord, that we're in your hands. And so I want to pray for each and every one here today. You know, pray for your will to be done. And we pray as you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, Father right. Lord, Lord, First lectionary reading comes from Romans 4, verses 1 through 5, and then 13 through 17. Right. What then are we to say was gained by Abraham, our ancestor, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who without works trusts him, who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation." For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. The word of God for the people of God. I think it's kind of wild 
that the God who made heaven, right? What are some things we know about heaven? Um, 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 the crosses. The crosses? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So the crosses represent our forgiveness and our chance to go to heaven. What about you guys? What are some things we know about heaven? That is when in doubt. That's a great answer, actually. <laughs> yeah, so what we know about heaven is um, that's where we go for eternal life, right? That's where we're healed. So people that we know that have gone on to heaven that might be sick, when they go to heaven, they're healed. That's where we'll see all of our loved ones and we'll live forever with Jesus. So the same God that made heaven, that made eternity, also made our mountains, and made our ground, and made our rivers, right? That we get to experience and enjoy. So next time we're outside, you can, we get to think about that and feel close to God. We can play outside. We can play outside. Did you ever think about when you play outside, you get to feel closer to God? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything you guys do that makes you feel close to God? When I go on hikes or when I listen to music, that's when I feel close to God. Anything for you guys? Somebody you like? Yeah, troll with it. So think about that. Next time you're playing outside, even during just playtime, you can think about that and say, whoa, God made all these mountains, and He made the mountains, and He made all this for me also to enjoy. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Does anybody want to pray for us? Want to pray for you? You want to? Okay, let's do that. Amen. Thank you so much. I don't know. Are they, do they need to go anywhere? Just go to your parents. Everybody just go to your parents today. This sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> for Ron again today, and uh, we'll be reading <laughs> Psalm 121, the psalm that Samantha used in the children's uh, moment, which was wonderful as always. Uh, psalm 121 is on page 844 in your hymnal, and I don't know if it's on the screen as a responsive reading or not, but if you want to turn and read parts of it with me on page 844 in the hymnal, I'd be pleased to have your help. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence does my help come? The Lord will not let your foot be moved. The Lord who keeps you will not slumber. The Lord is your keeper. 
The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day. Nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. going to try to uh, make it through this today <coughs> and uh, if, uh, if I don't somebody else can finish it for me um, having trouble here. the uh, passage that was read this morning was from uh, a very familiar psalm, and it was from a uh, kind of a, a what's known as a song of accent. Ascents. Um, the children of Israel used this psalm as they were going up to Jerusalem, and uh, we are kind of uh, as we're going through Lent. This is a series that we're calling uh, the season of Selah depending on how you pronounce it. And I've, I've looked it up, it's pronounced different ways. Actually, uh, some people say Salah, Salah, or Selah, or Selah. Uh, so I guess, I don't know which one's right. So uh, Selah seems to be close to what uh, uh, I think is closer, but I don't know. Uh, so we'll, we may call it different things, but uh, <coughs> Basically, when you see that, and you see it over and over in this passage, and throughout the book of Psalms, it is a musical pause. Uh, they believe it was a lot like a musical rest. Uh, in music, whenever you see the rest, that means there's a break or a pause in between uh, singing. And uh, in this Psalms, uh, when you see that word, it is, a, it is really a, probably a rest, a a moment to stop and to take a pause. And so that's appropriate for this time of year as we think about Lent. Lent being a time that we kind of change course a little bit, where we slow down and begin to reflect and to think on our lives. And, uh, and so I think uh, that we could, we could probably take the time to, to just take a break and, and to experience God. Um, but we're also talking about taking a journey in this passage today. And I think it's appropriate because when, uh, when I'm hiking in the woods, uh, I usually, after I get tired for a little while, I'll take a break and sit on a rock or something. Maybe sometimes have a, a drink of water or a, a snack. And that's a time or a break in, along the journey. We need those, by the way. Jesus even took those times uh, of a moment to reflect in those times. Um, but as we think about the, the mountain that he's talking about, uh, it's, the idea here is they're going up to Jerusalem. And this was a song that they would often sing as they were making their way up to Jerusalem. And I say up to Jerusalem because Jerusalem, as you know, sat on a plateau. And so no matter where you came from, what direction, you were actually going up to Jerusalem. And so as they would sing this uh, pilgrim song or this song of ascent, as they're making their way up, they would recite this and sing this over and over. Some people, uh, I've heard people say that they do this prayer or this psalm when they're getting ready to go on a journey. Uh, and he talks about how that uh, the Lord will keep you. And that word keep is used several times in this passage. It's from a, a Hebrew word that really is an interesting word. It uh, really is where we get our word shadow. If we think of shadow, we don't always think of that being a good thing. But in a desert situation, when you're uh, in, a, in a desert place, a shadow can be a very good thing. You know, if you, you find a shadow from a, from a tree or something like that, it can be a real blessing. And so he's saying that God is your, your shade. In the toughest times of life, God is your shadow that will give you uh, and sustain you with what you need. 
And so as we're making our way up this mountain, uh, we're, we're thinking about the very fact that we are in the hands of God. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will not smite you by day, and He will keep you. And uh, as we think about this passage, we understand that, you know, some people will say, well, this is, this is a promise that God's going to protect you, and it is. Uh, but it doesn't guarantee us from any troubles or trials or any problems. We know that from experience that's not the case, that we do have troubles. But it does promise us that we're in God's hands. Our lives are in God's hands. I know today we're hearing a lot about uh, the coronavirus and all that's going on and people are, are, are scared. And, 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 <clears throat> and I'm not saying that we shouldn't take precautions and all that. And, and you know, we, we know that uh, it, it's something that we are doing and we should do. But at the same time, I almost feel like that we're living in an age of fear where uh, fear is being something that's pushed on people. And uh, so many people are fearful today and in a way that they never were. Uh, last night I watched a movie. It's an old movie, uh, the Orson Welles movie, War of the Worlds. Y'all remember that? Uh, and it was uh, about when the aliens invaded uh, Earth. And they, they were in basically almost unstoppable. And all of our... Uh, all of our weapons that were used against them did no good. And so finally, toward the end, it looked like the end of the world. And do you know where they found everyone ended up going to? They were in church. And all, all kinds of people found their way to sanctuaries. And they were singing, and they were praying. And that's where they planned to spend, if need be, their last days. And I think that's appropriate to think about the fact that no matter what happens in this life, we are in God's hands. Uh, you know, I know that uh, there's all kinds of uh, all kinds of fears that we could we could spend our lives worrying about, but nothing can happen to us that is not out of God's will. In other words, God has a whole world in His hands. We used to sing. And that doesn't mean nothing bad can happen, but as long as God has a plan for your life and God, uh, you know, you think about the nation of Israel and He made promises to them that were fulfilled and that they would continue to be a nation. And no other nation was, has seen so much people come against them and try to annihilate them as the nation of Israel. And yet they're still a people today. And I believe that God is saying the same thing to us, to you and I. There's something about knowing that as I go through life, no matter what happens, that God is in my life and God is with me, that makes it more precious to me. And there's just something about that. I found that first time I remember feeling that uh, or experiencing that was when I was about 17 years old and I'd just given my life to the Lord and my little sister passed away with cancer. And it's hard to explain unless you've been through it, and you know what I'm talking about. But there was just this overwhelming presence during that time. This sense that I never had before, something that I felt stronger than I'd ever felt before. And it was almost as if God was sitting right beside of me. And He carried me through that time. And I've seen other times where God has helped me through. And uh, I remember... That sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes we, we are kind of disappointed with the way things turn out. And uh, I remember the time that I was in West Virginia and I received a phone call that my father had been killed in a car accident. And I didn't, uh, I, I'll just tell you, my world turned upside down at that, that point. Dad had uh, recently given his life to the Lord and was we were uh, repairing our relationship and when this happened I, I just felt cheated and I guess I thought back then as a young man that my vision of God my picture of God is that if I did all the right things that good things would happen and this sort of shattered that that idea for me and it wasn't that I no longer believed in God it's just I no longer believed in that God that I'd formed in my mind. I began to understand that, yeah, bad things do happen sometimes to good people. But, but, here's the thing. God has promised He'd never leave us 
and He never forsake us. On the other hand, I have seen those times where I have seen God carry me through. Where I have seen His hand so strong and felt His presence so real that I don't think I could take another step without Him. I've seen those times where God has done miracles. I've seen God do wonderful things even in the hospital and, and you know, uh, pray for somebody. And, and I realize that and even sometimes the doctors realize that it's out of our hands. There's some things that are out of our hands. And this is a, an assurance to us that no matter where we go, God is going to be with us. He's going to carry us through. And He's going to see us through in those tough times. I like that song, uh, In the Morning When I Rise. In the morning when I rise. In the morning when I rise. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. I can't think of anything better today than to offer you and to tell you that you can, as you go through life's journey, is to have Jesus. You know, we, we go a lot of, a lot of miles, uh, whether it be in a car or walking or whatever, and we carry, cover a lot of territory. And you think about the children of Israel and the, and the pilgrimages they made, and they needed to know that God was on their side, that God was with them. And God is going to carry you through no matter what, as long as we trust in Him, that we continue to understand that God is in our life.